idiot woman. The uh, inner city blacks. Welcome, one, welcome all. How are you, my little roaches? Thank you so much for joining us once again on another episode of The Josh Potter Show. I, of course, am Josh Potter. Show's coming up March 10th. It's right around the corner. It's in Bellflower, California. If you're around that area, I'm going to be at the Stand Up Comedy Club. That's the name of the club. It's very simple. Stand Up Comedy Club. Bellflower. March 10th. It says Josh Potter and Friends. It's just going to be me. I don't know why it says and friends, but it does. I'll bring a friend to open for me, but you're not going to know who the hell they are. But uh, you can get to know them. So come on out. Again, Bellflower, March 10th. On April 22nd, we are going to have a show in Bakersfield, California at a place called The Well. So all these ticket links can be found up in my old Instagram at Josh underscore Potter or on my Twitter at J underscore Potter in the old links there in the bio. So pleased to be getting tickets to those. Another thing I want to bring to your attention, uh, of course, the email is Josh Potter show at gmail.com. You can send in all your articles or your musical instrumentals that we use to start the show. Rochi award winner, Griff Parker making this little number right here. So many Roach reporter sending things in, by the way. I'm getting overwhelmed, and we have some wonderful ones today, but we have pressing issues to get to as well. Uh, but to start the show off, just something I want to make you aware of. Coming in March, starting in March, I should say, the show will be moving to Wednesdays. Now, I know so many folk out there hate change. I hate it, too. That's why I'm giving you an incredible heads up. <laughs> Starting in March, we're moving to Wednesdays. I know there will still be comments. Where's the episode? I'm ready for them all. And I'm going to practice being Zen about it, being Buddhist, even though I told you weeks and weeks in advance, I won't get angry at the comments. I know they're coming, but I do want to let you know that we are moving the show to Wednesday morning, same time, just on Wednesday makes things a little bit easier for the folk here as far as production goes and so i'm all for it and i hope you are as well and i hope you uh aren't you know up in arms about the move and you stick with us that's all it's just a day late that's all so uh just want to make you aware of that and i will continue to pound you over the head with that fact for the next few weeks so just want to make you aware please to be tuning in starting in march wednesday mornings Uh, Valentine's Day is upon us. Today is Valentine's Day. If you're watching this on the Tuesday that it came out for one of the final Tuesdays, happy Valentine's Day to you and yours. Don't know how you're celebrating. But I did get an email from Rochi Award-winning Roach reporter Justin M. It says, Josh, I named a roach after you as I thought it would be a good tribute to the King Roach and topical as I've seen uh, that make a roach after your ex stories in the news lately. Yes, you can make, you can have a, what is that, an, a bird? What is that, an owl? Yeah, I think it's called a frog mouth. A frog mouth? That's the name of the bird? Yeah. It's not like a frog mouth sparrow or something like that? It's just called a frog mouth. <laughs> I'm quizzing <laughs> you on your, uh, what is it for birds? Yeah, it just says, uh, maybe it's, frog it's an mouth owl? owl. It's an owl, right? It's not a bird. <laughs> well, <laughs> are owls birds? <laughs> no, they're not. They're different, right? No, they're they're a type of bird. I guess that's true. <laughs> that's like saying, but I, I'm yeah, they're in the bird, whatever phylum or whatever <laughs> genus or whatever you want to get all fucking. But they're not birds. They're owls. No, nope. all right, I'm alone on this one. <laughs> Anyhow, you they're, can get they're a, part of the Aves class, Josh. The class, see, is that now? Is that a bird class? Yes, that's oh, the bird. Fuck me. All right. Well, <laughs> evidently, at the old San Antonio Zoo, you can get a roach named after your ex, and then they throw the roach to the owl, and the owl eats it. Now, this owl, I hope, is going to get stuffed with. How many roaches do you think this thing can eat? Because boy, oh boy. 
I only have a few names I want to throw in there. I wish Justin M would have asked me what name I would have liked to put in there because we have a video, and this is what they do. If you donate, not only will they name the roach after your ex, but then you get to watch the roach get eaten. Is this going to get us pulled off YouTube here in the Nice Boy Clock? Because it is violence against a roach. Nah. All right. Let's it's see. Valentine's I think, you, Day I think YouTube stuff. is fine with it. It's okay. all in love. It's just a bug. For Christ's sake, YouTube, get off my sack. So here it is, the old frog head. Ugh. I don't like hearing the crunchies, even though they're cartoon ones. I don't need to hear the... It, did they mic the owl up, or is this... So where's my name? Where's my shout-out? The owl should have said my name or something, right? Or had a sign like... This is for you, Samantha, or whomever they were doing. All right? Well, um, Justin did include a little note. It said, a roach named after the king roach himself. Sure, but how do we know? Are they just mass producing that video and sending it around? Because I think that's a little... They're supposed to say, like, I would like them to hold the roach. Now, let's say my ex's name is Beth. All right, we'll just use that one. I almost said the real name for <laughs> But let's just say Beth. I want them to hold it up and be like, oh, it's Beth, you know, and like hold the roach up and then be like, "Bye, bye Beth, and then feed it to them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was that? We had to hear cartoon crunches, too. Those creep me out, for the record. I want to hear the real crunches of the owl. Not the, If that was the real crunches, that's also very terrifying. So I'm going to just go with cartoon crunches. But thank you, Justin. Um, that was wonderful to get because uh, I did get this uh, story sent to me from a many roach reporter out there. You know, obviously, it having to do with roaches and all. And some people thought it was violence against roaches. I think these roaches are just giving up their lives uh, in order because they're going to get eaten anyway. I mean, what's a roach does last for a while, but like if you're in what is that called? Frogmouth country? <laughs> probably not. <laughs> probably live a terrifying existence running away from those. So it is nice that they're like almost giving up tribute so that you can shit on your ex. I think that's very <laughs> special. And uh, very kind of them. And so anyhow, I got this story sent to me quite a bit. It is nice to get the full treatment from Justin M. I appreciate your donation to uh, the San Antonio (laughs) Zoo as well. That's very nice. I don't know how much it was. It didn't say. Did it say, like, if you donate a certain amount or is it uh, just a donation? Because how much could a roach be? They've got a bazillion of them. Like, oh, this one's Sarah. Uh, if you'd like to know, it looks like this one was $10. Oh, well, what, what a mensch Justin M. is. Thank you so much for uh, for that, by the way. That was wonderful. And again, I hope everybody has a tremendous Valentine's Day. But uh, we have to get to some breaking, breaking news. As of hours ago of the taping of this, something insane has come out. Beep, 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 beep. Breaking beep, story. Beep, 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 beep. Now, when this program began a couple of years ago, and the very wise, the very astute Any pointed out how sus Sussel Wilson is, in fact. We all kind of laughed, you know, and it was like, hey, he is kind of sus. He is a little dorky. He's kind of weird. What's going on there? But no one else was really pointing to all of his weirdness. And the microscope had not been on him because he was experiencing such success as a member of the Seattle Seahawks. After the trade this past offseason where it sent him to Denver, uh, to the Broncos, where he became one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the history of the NFL, we saw the wheels come off. And we saw a lot of things. And to the point where, I, you know, full disclosure, I was kind of starting to feel a little bad for him. I'm like, is Russell Wilson just autistic? And I'm making fun of, a, of an R word? Like, am I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I felt, you know, I had like many a nights battling. Do I really lean in on this guy? Or is there something else going on? And since this whole season went down where Russell Wilson had 
lack of success. Very, very bad season for Russell Wilson. Nathaniel Hackett, first-year head coach. I could have told you that guy was going to get fired after one and done. I knew that was happening. Now you throw in Russell Wilson in the mix. Turns out, through all the hullabaloo, and we went over all of it, you can go back to the Rochi Awards and get a nice synopsis of the hijinks that went down since he's been in Denver. But now, as they try to turn the page and they try to make success out of Russell Wilson, they've brought in a new head coach, a head coach with a great pedigree. He's taken the New Orleans Saints to Super Bowls. He's coached with uh, Drew Brees for many years. We all know him. They made a fucking movie about him that starred Kevin James. I'm talking about Sean Payton. He enters as the new head coach of the Denver Broncos. And as he comes in, he's had many press conferences, many interviews, many people asking him about Russell Wilson. And in fact, it brought to light something that I didn't even bring up on this program. Russell Wilson had his own coaches that he brought to the Denver Broncos, which you can understand would get a little weird. You know what I'm saying? You know, a guy comes in to a place that has a new set of coaches trying to gel, trying to figure everything out. And then he goes, this is my coach. So I listen to this guy. So anything you want to tell me, you got to tell him. It gets weird. And it's not a recipe for success, I'd imagine. Not very cohesive. uh, You know, not a lot of gelling happening there. So Sean Payton was asked... What's happening with Russ and his coaches? You're going to allow these other outside coaches into your uh, locker room, into your meetings, et cetera, et cetera. Here's Sean Payton's response, which is so funny to me because it's like Sean Payton's like, I have never heard of this in my life. Listen to this. On the 30 seconds. Coach, uh, Russell Wilson had a, a personal coach, Jake mm-hmm. Heaps, in the building with access who wasn't on the staff. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with that. Uh, how do you feel about um, <laughs> players having their own people off the staff? In the building, access to players. Yeah, that's foreign to me. That that's not going to take place here. I mean, I, I'm I'm unfamiliar with it, but our staff will be here, our players will be here, and that'll be it. That'll be it. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, it's not going to be happening. He didn't even mince words, and it's so funny to me. And so, like, when if you're Russell Wilson, do you already know this? Are you watching this clip on Twitter and going like? well, I guess I got to fire my stupid co Like, you know what I mean? Like Tom Brady had his, the only thing that I've ever heard of the, something like this is Tom Brady had like his own nutritionist slash like trainer that was like kind of doing all this like woo woo shit. And people were like, who's this fucking guy? You know what I mean? There was like rumor that he gave medical advice to other players kind of on the side and they're like, Oh, okay. And then they would like take that medical advice And uh, it would turn out poorly for them. (laughs) So everyone's like, who's this fucking guy hanging out here? Well, more has gone on in terms of Russell Wilson. USA Today put out an article today, and I've gotten sent this by so many Roach reporters out there. Oh, my Lord, just sending this up my ass. And I do appreciate it, by the way. (laughs) I appreciate it a great deal. On Wednesday, serious questions were raised about Russell Wilson's charity, known as the Why Not You Foundation when a six-month investigation by the USA Today Network was published. The story, which sought out to investigate past Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year award winners, nonprofits, ended up keying in on the Denver Broncos quarterback. Now, the Walter Payton Man of the Year is every team nominates one of their players to become the Walter Payton Man of the Year. It's a prestigious award because it involves community outreach. It involves charity. And every year, one of the 32 uh, players that are nominated from the 32 teams gets the award. J.J. Watt has won it in the past. Tom Brady. I mean, these this and then they wear the Darth Vader patch on there. You can always tell the Walter Payton Man of the Year because they have the Darth Vader patch. And there's not many of them out there. Eli Manning had one. I'm trying to think of others. But it is a prestigious <laughs> award. Russell Wilson has the Darth Vader patch. He has won it many a times. Well, not many a times, but he has won it. You don't, I don't think you can win it I because it's once it's one guy a year. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like I that's I call it the Darth Vader patch because it just it's Walter Payton in like a cape. Look at that. And that's the patch. That's the award and the patch. So they wear the patch on there and it's like, what is that? Dark? Like there's Drew Brees with it right there. You see it? 
strange looking. But it's the award. It's Walter Payton. It's kind of cool. It makes you go like, what's that guy? What's that Darth Vader thing on their jersey? So yeah, it's been it's prestigious in terms of the the people that have won it in the past. So I don't know that this is investigating. It's, I think it's just the winners. So it's probably investigating, you know, Drew Brees' foundation, Tom Brady's, etc. All these different players. It seems to be investigating multiple ones, but it's keying in on. Russell Wilson's for some reason. Wilson received the award back in 2020, which is dubbed as the league's most prestigious honor. It was presented for excellence on and off the field with an emphasis on community service and philanthropy, as I mentioned. Still, the investigation by USA Today found that Wilson's organization reported it spent just 24.3 cents of every dollar on charitable activities in 2020 and 2021, combined and nearly twice as much 1.1 1.1 million on salaries and employee benefits in that span. This is according to federal tax records. The salaries include more than six figures for an executive who also works for uh, Sierra and Russell Wilson personally, which has nonprofit experts prodding. The investigation states from the nine, <clears throat> excuse me, from the 990 tax returns from the nonprofit's inception through 2021 show it reported 7.5 million in revenue and 7 million in expenses during its first 8 years of existence less than half of the money 2.8 million or 39.6 cents of every dollar spent has gone to charitable activities all as grants to other non uh profits there that's what they that's what the money that they donate their grants to other nonprofits the remaining the remaining 4.2 million has paid for the fundraising, administrative, and management expenses, including the salaries of three employees who have received $1.9 million combined in 2020, the year in which Russell Wilson was given the Man of the Year Award. His foundation reported $838,000 in revenue and $1.2 million in expenses. So it lost money. They're like, hey, kid with cancer, pay up. You owe us. (laughs) <laughs> 257000 on charitable activities and 548000 on salaries and employee benefits, meaning about twice as much money went to executives in the foundation compared to the charity, and only 21 cents of every dollar earned went to charity. Russell Wilson has always prioritized serving his community, but this year he met the challenge and more when, he, when it was needed most, because it was COVID, remember? That's what Commissioner Roger Goodell said when Wilson was given the award. He has shown continued excellence on the field for nine seasons. Uh, not the 10th. <laughs> not the next one. <laughs> this last one <laughs> has been not so excellent. But the work he has done to help youth and fight food insecurity through his Why Not You Foundation bolsters his lasting legacy what a strange name i get it it's like why not you that's nice because it's supposed to be like inspirational or whatever but to fight food insecurity and call it the why not you foundation is kind of weird it's like hey why not you you want a burger i don't know why not you (laughs) the examination by usa today calls into question the exact contributions wilson has made uh which were cited by the NFL as some of the reason for why the quarterback was given the award. So it's calling into question his actual contribution. Has he donated any money to his foundation? Things like that. And many people, you know, I tweeted this out and, you know, mentioned that I was going to be reporting on it here on the program. We have to talk about it. It is about Russell Wilson after all. And many people were saying that this is actually more than most charities give in terms of, uh, you know, re- their revenue. So, you know, because they have, like, I, I guess the, the Red Cross, for instance, uh, someone used as an example, gives 10 cents of every dollar to the to the actual charity. So this is actually, they were saying, so Russell Wilson's actually giving more. And I don't know. I mean, that could very well be true. And I, uh, you know, I we could Google all of the different charities and how much of a percentage they give and whatnot but why was this investigated that is my question like obviously they looked into other walter payton man of the year winners and this is the only one they're talking about if it was what the average charity does don't you think that they would bring up drew Brees and the other winners and bring up their charities and say well and meanwhile drew Brees gives 38 cents of every i don't think that's happening with these foundations i don't think that uh the NFL players who make these charitable foundations 
it's often a tax write-off, let's face it. You know, they're all doing it. Literally, I mean, Damar Hamlin, who now has raised well over almost $10 million for his Chasing M's Foundation, he had a foundation as a backup safety. Like, before he almost died on the field, none of y'all knew who Damar Hamlin was. I knew who he was because I'm a Bills fan, and I'm like, oh, Damar Hamlin, he's playing for Micah Hyde because Micah Hyde's injured. I, I knew who he was. The guy's goal for his Chasing M's Foundation for the toy drive was $2,500. It ended up because he almost died raising $10 million. But point being, I'm not sure that he was going to take only 28 cents of that 2500 You know what I'm saying? I think it all. Go, I think they use it as a tax write-off for the most part. But they also... um, You know, they know they make a great deal of money and they have other business endeavors and they don't take the money to run the charity necessarily. Now, I know Russell Wilson is a very, I mean, obviously he's a much higher uh, profiled member of the NFL than DeMar Hamlin is, maybe not anymore, but uh, he, you know, so he has a whole, his charity is running with executives and they're probably doing other things. They have employees and I'm sure, like you said, with the Red Cross and all these other ones that they have operating expenses and a lot of nonprofits do that. What is this here, Kirsten? Tell me what we were looking at. Um, I'm actually not quite sure yet. I'm <laughs> trying to understand it. You myself. were zooming in as if I was <laughs> yeah. supposed to have attention on it. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I, I don't want to do, I'm not a research. I'm not, I mean, I don't know if you know this from watching the program. I'm not a research guy. So if you very well, the people who are defending this saying that, you know, other charities, donate X, X, Y, Z. Maybe this is par for the course, but then it just makes me go, why is USA Today reporting on this then? Like, what is the point of them throwing Russell Wilson under the bus for this if, in fact, it's normal practice? So I'm just keeping a a watchful eye on it. I'm not saying that Russell Wilson is a scumbag quite yet. We do know that he's sus. We do know that he's a weirdo. I'm not ready to uh, cast nefarious motives upon him quite yet i will sit here and wait if if again if this is the standard maybe there's no story here and but then it makes me go well why are they reporting on this has the Cecil wilson uh sort of crept into other people's brains and now they're starting to just you know try to get rid of him for any sort of reason what does that say um i was just looking up the red cross thing because i think it was the opposite and like they spend about like 90 sense of every oh, dollar so. on people but <laughs> i think it's that non-profits only are required to sp- like provide five percent of whatever towards the actual um huh charity and i could be wrong about that too but i think it's more like with the non-profit stuff to be considered non-profit it can be lower hilarious that people in my twitter were citing the red cross <laughs> saying that they only donate 10 cents and i'm over here going like and and so and uh well if that's because i like i said i i knew that that's uh might not be the case. I didn't want to jump into anything. But we're going to get to the news here in a couple of moments. Before we do that, I want to let you know today's Josh Potter show is brought to us by PayPal Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Learning about a deal makes you feel like an insider. I know I love that. When I find out, I go, ooh, I don't want to tell anybody. It's my little secret. Uh, I'm someone in the know, you know what I mean? Honey is the free shopping tool that actually scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Pretty su- pretty sweet. So you don't have to go around investigating. They just, Honey does that for you. It supports over 30,000 stores online, ranging from tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. We know how we use that. I mean, I'm using food delivery nonstop all of the time and I need all the promo codes I can muster so thank the Lord for honey imagine shopping on your favorite site and when you check out the honey button appears and boom all you have to do is click it apply coupons bam you wait a few seconds as honey searches the coupons it can find if honey finds a working coupon guess what the price it's gonna go down I love Honey, and you're going to love it, too. I never go shopping online without it. Honey doesn't just work on desktops. It works on your iPhone, by the way. Uh, Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on some wonderful deals. And by getting it, you're doing yourself a solid and supporting my podcast. Thank you so much. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash potter again get paypal honey for free 
at joinhoney.com slash potter. Today's Josh Potter show also brought to us by DoorDash. Remember how I said I get a lot of food delivery? Well, <laughs> thanks, DoorDash. Does it feel like you're paying more for delivery than your meals? Well, never fear. DoorDash is helping you out because they got the Dash Pass, my friend. Dash Pass is the easiest way to get whatever you need delivered for less. Oh, I get so many things delivered. It's not just food, by the way. It is convenience items. I needed deodorant the other day. Boop, 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 DoorDash. I didn't even have to stop playing Madden. Knock on my door, deodorant. I'm like, good, thank God. The poor del- the poor driver didn't even have to smell me. It was easy. So thank the Lord for DoorDash. Dash Pass is the DoorDash membership that offers unlimited $0 delivery fees from thousands of eligible restaurants, grocery, and convenience stores. Receive DoorDash credits back on all pickup orders, by the way. Flowers, pet supplies, groceries. You got flowers today? You're going to need some flowers today if it's Valentine's Day. You know what I'm saying? So I would get on Dash Pass and help out, uh, you know your pocketbook a little bit getting those flowers dash pass has so many uh so much more to save on than just your favorite meals you get what you want when you need it without any upfront commitments cancel your membership at any time no hidden fees no additional fees enjoy the best of your neighborhood as you discover the new and best places near you with doordash so get 50 percent off right now up to 20 dollar value on your next dash pass order when you sign up for the membership and code jp at checkout that's 50% off your first Dash Pass order up to $20 value with code JP at the old checkout. Say goodbye to delivery fees. Get Dash Pass from DoorDash today using code JP. When you've got zero delivery fees, you're free to get more because you can. Start your free month trial today. Again, the code is JP at checkout with Dash Pass. Time to get to the news, friends. Oh boy, oh boy, Walter Brown, another zoo story. Walter Brown submitting this to Josh Potter Show at gmail.com. Police in Dallas on Friday announced that an arrest was made after two exotic monkeys were reported missing from the city zoo earlier in the week. Davian Irwin, 24, was charged with six counts of animal cruelty in the disappearance of the monkeys. Now, why would someone take some monkeys from the zoo? Huh. Is it just because he loves monkeys and thinks they're cute? I bet he wants to fuck the monkeys. It's going to be my guess. I haven't read the story yet. Walter Brown sent it in for a reason. Let's find out what the reason is. On Monday... The two Emperor Tamarin monkeys were reported missing from the Dallas Zoo. On Tuesday, after receiving a tip about the animals, police searched an empty home in Lancaster, a suburb located just south of Dallas, and discovered the monkeys in a closet. A team was then sent to transport the monkeys back to the zoo. It was clear the habitat had been intentionally compromised, the zoo said in a statement posted on Twitter feed. I mean, what does that mean? They just like... There was trees trampled over or something like that. Escaped Emperor Tamarins, a small monkey known for their long, white, mustache-like whiskers. That's what the one right here? Yeah. I'd probably steal him. He's cutie. It doesn't look very hot to me. (laughs) I'd go for a different one. (laughs) Maybe that gorilla we saw the other week. (laughs) They would likely stay close to homes, who officials explained, but uh, employees searching near their habitat and across the 100-acre grounds could not initially locate them. How do you do that? What do you do to find a monkey? You know? I couldn't whistle there. (laughs) But you just, what do you, I mean, how do they, they're just walking around trying to find them. On Tuesday, Dallas police released a photo and surveillance video and asked for the public's help in identifying a person wanted for questioning in connection with the missing monkeys. Well, why did he steal them? We've got to know. It's probably some monkey trafficking, you know what I mean? I can get a buck for these monkeys. You steal them from the zoo, you sell them to, like, you know, a wet market in China or something. On ja- back on January 13th, the zoo was shut down for several hours after a four-year-old clouded leopard named Nova went missing. Oh, my Lord, all these animals missing. According to the Associated Press, Dallas police used drones and initially dispatched SWAT officers to the zoo, not understanding the size of the clouded leopard before the (laughs) 25-pound animal was found safe on zoo grounds. Good golly. Harrison Adele, executive vice president of animal care and conservation at the Dallas Zoo, said that there was a 
tear in the mesh of Nova's enclosure, and authorities had opened a criminal investigation. Are these related? Why did it just jump to this other animal? It is our belief that this was an intentional act. Dallas police were back in the zoo the next day after an intentional cut was made on the enclosures that housed the Langer monkeys, USA Today reported. So this is a, this is a zoo heist that we've got on our hands at the Dallas Zoo. None of the monkeys were missing or harmed. Police said that they did not know if the two incidents were related. Then on the 21st, an endangered vulture named Pin was found dead in its habitat. Oh, no. When a vulture dies, do you think the other vultures circle it? Or is that like cannibalism? They leave that corpse alone. I don't know how the nature... I'm I'm bad at animals. This is not Joe Rogan experience. We don't know anything (laughs) about... I know nothing about animals. I just thought... I thought an owl was separate from a bird five minutes ago. This goes from being about malicious and gets into really criminal intent that's dangerous, according to one of the uh, police officers. I've been in the zoo profession for over 30 plus years and never had a situation like this. It's unprecedented and very disturbing. This is crazy. The Dallas Police Department and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service don't want to get them involved. They launched a multi-agency probe on the incident, and CBS News reported adding that the zoo is offering a $10,000 reward to anyone who can provide information that leads to an arrest or an indictment. While relatively rare animals have escaped enclosures of the Dallas Zoo before, what is going on at the Dallas Zoo? People are just, <laughs> they're having breakouts all the time. I've never heard of one, like, if one animal at a zoo breaks out, that's fucked, right? I mean, mm-hmm. that's like, you're like, holy shit, a tiger got out at the zoo. This one's like, they're escaping like it's a fucking prison or something. They're trying to get out all the time. So a lot of animal heists. What's going on at the Dallas Zoo? We're going to have to keep an eye on it. Is there just a guy out there who's trying to fuck a whole bunch of animals? Or is this for something more nefarious, I wonder? Well, if you recognize this man eating Doritos, is that the guy? Know. This is the guy. That doesn't look like a guy who's capable of, like, wrangling monkeys and <laughs> capturing them. Or, like, a snow leopard or whatever the fuck. Well, for the snow leopard, I think he just cut the cage. And, and like, it went free? So yeah, this like guy's, like, free. anarchy guy? Yeah, Get well, out there. I'm trying to free the animals okay. if, in fucking Dallas where they don't have <laughs> any sort of uh, – I don't think that leopard is going to acclimate properly in the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth metropolitan. According to the police, uh, the thief vowed that if he was sprung from jail, he would steal more animals. You got a whole different article here. This is good. He's uh, maybe So he's just a freedom fighter. But yeah. a misguided one, because guess what? A lot of these animals are going to get out and then they're going to die because they don't live in Dallas, you know, originally. I don't know, again, much about animals, but I'm sure that some of these animals, the Dallas climate isn't for them. You know what I mean? I think the way that they found him is uh, he was asking questions at the Dallas Zoo that were suspicious, <laughs> such as where's the doors? <laughs> yeah. So uh, how do you unlock one of these? <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, where do y'all get the monkeys from and how do y'all shift them around? That was one question. Uh, that's not so weird. If he was like, now, the combination. And then uh, he, uh, he later asked, where can I get one and how do y'all get them in at night? Where can I get one? That's so silly. Okay, well, this guy's, you know, he's not as... Uh, genius as one would expect based off of these charges i mean you're thinking oh my lord look at all the all these animals so uh, the vulture one must not be related because if he's all about freeing them and everything like that why would he kill a vulture right he just hates birds or the vulture he's thinking it's like gonna eat another animal or something he's like no not on my watch (laughs) elsewhere we can move forward with uh, this is actually sent in from Peter Griffin. I wonder if there's any. I mean, that's a that's got to be a fake name, right? I mean, come on. It says hi, Papa Roach listener since day one, but first time Roach reporter. Your story about vagina grapes. Remember that story? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. It's Valentine's Day. It's a great <laughs> day to remember the vagina grape story. Very romantic. Uh, and butt wine reminded me of the story of human wine decanter that my girlfriend came across while reading medical case studies. A man was hospitalized with an infection due to his practice of using a catheter to fill his bladder full of wine, then serve it to guests at parties (laughs) using his penis. 
Link to paper below and pasted and edited with relevant sections highlighted. I don't think we need to know them. So the man, what a, I mean, that is, wouldn't that be some opulent enjoy? I mean, if you went to a dinner party and a guy's like, would you like some wine? And you're like, I would love some wine. And then he just puts his cock into your wine glass <laughs> and pisses wine out. So did it work? It didn't work, obviously, right? He's in the hospital. This is a medical thing here, yeah? Was he able to piss the wine? Because that would be magic. And why haven't we done this before? Uh, evidently, you know, I guess the wine would poison you in your insides, right? That's what they said. A man was hospitalized. Yes, an infection due to his practice. Well, I don't know. The, pra- the catheter could cause an infection in its own Maybe it wasn't the wine in itself. I want to see. Try again, fella. That's what I say. Keep at it. I want to go to a restaurant where I get to experience this type of thing. (laughs) Have you been to Beauregard's? Oh, my Lord. (laughs) What they do with the wine is so (laughs) unique. A man comes over and pisses it. Now, you got to ask. You got to (laughs) ask, do you have a Merlot, a Cab? Different people for different wines, obviously. You know? Oh, you want a cab? We got to get Mark over here. (laughs) His dick has the cab in it. Oh, boy. What a story. Thank you, Peter Griffin, if that is your real (laughs) name. Let's get to one more before we get into uh, something fun that Kirsten has prepared for us. This one. Oh, boy. I love the the, the word at the top. It's from Matthew Vondrek says plunger terrorists now we've talked quite a bit about semen terrorists in the, in this show uh it is something that we have to keep an eye out on and it's still a big uh prevalent issue but we haven't had many reportings of semen terrorism so i think raising awareness of it has in fact thwarted much of the terrorist activity in this case with the plunger terrorist naked and armed with a toilet plunger that's how police say a Las Vegas man terrorized a guest at a downtown Des Moines hotel last week. Okay, so this man went to Des Moines from Las Vegas to be insane. Interesting. He could have just... <laughs> I thought this was going to be in Vegas. I'm like, that's just a Tuesday in Vegas having a guy terrorize you with a plunger. Police say Trevin Hill on January 28th approached a victim in the 18th floor stairwell at the Des Moines Marriott downtown with a toilet plunger. I feel like I've been in that fucking hotel. (laughs) According to the court documents, he yelled, I'm going to now they they bleep out an expletive. It says, I'm going to expletive get you. I'm going to probably go with fucking. (laughs) I'm going to fucking get you is what I think he said. As he continued to chase the victim down with the toilet plunger in his hands. Some toilet plungers, by the way, have heft to them. You could really bludgeon a man with a toilet plunger, especially those ones that are like for a hotel. You know, the ones that are uh, not necessarily just the uh, bowl shape. You know what I mean? I'm talking about the ones that are like, you know, they're long and they've got a thing at the top and they go. How are those? ASMR noises for the folks <laughs> listening on uh, iTunes and Spotify and what have you. That's my plunger sound effect. <laughs> what is this? Oh, I thought you had a video of the plunger. Could have really got to the bottom of what size we're talking here. But that could really, you could really bash someone over the head with a plunger like that. Hill also ran around naked on the 22nd floor of the Marriott and destroyed a sprinkler system. According to court documents, he was seen by multiple people pulling fire alarms around the hotel. Oh my God. The worst place to have a fire alarm is a hotel. No one ever listens to a fire alarm in a hotel ever. The sprinkler system, that would cause a little bit of uh, alarm for me if that was going off. But I've been in, I mean the one, the just a couple of months ago, I was in a hotel. Fire alarm went off. I went downstairs because it got, a woman came over the thing. Everyone must go downstairs. I went downstairs. I saw everyone down there. We were down there for five seconds. We went back up. End of story. The next time it happened, I did not go downstairs. I was like, I am not. I will burn in this building before I head down at this point. So I, would, I wonder how many people... He got to see him naked is what I mean because he was probably running around the 22nd floor pulling fire alarms. And people are like, oh, my, a fire. And they come out and see uh, Trevin Hill here naked. He looks like a good-looking enough guy. 
Hill continued running around on multiple floors, swinging the toilet plunger at guests until he was restrained by Des Moines firefighters. Hill is charged with assault while displaying a dangerous weapon, first-degree criminal mischief, and dis- disorderly conduct. That's right, a plunger, a dangerous weapon, folks. I wonder if he got anybody with it. Is it dangerous because it is the size of it, the heft of it, or because there is shit on it? <laughs> and you could spray somebody with shit. I do not know. Now at six, a man chasing. I wonder, can we play this woman? Because I want to hear how. Absolutely. She, this is Stacy Horse, man. I want to see how. Do you know her? Yeah, Des Moines. I always oh, makes me right, proud. Oh, that's right. That's right. Oh, this is your old station. So I want to hear how she says it. And come and breaking story out of the Des Moines Marriott Hotel. A man charged with nudity and swinging a plunger. Let's hear how, Let's hear what Naked they say. Naked and armed with a toilet plunger. I That's how police right. say a Las Vegas man <laughs> terrorized guests at a Des Moines hotel last week. Police say Trevin Hill was staying at the downtown Marriott last weekend when he stripped off his clothes and started attacking guests with a toilet plunger. He's also accused of pulling the fire alarm and destroying a fire sprinkler. Hill is now charged with disorderly conduct, criminal mischief, and assault. What a pro. Because <laughs> there's no chance that you come across that copy and go, wait, what? <laughs> huh? Did, is someone fucking with me right now? If I saw that in the prompter, I'd be like, Toilet plunger. Retar- is that for real? Oh, okay. It's real. What a pro. Good job, Stacy. All right, Kirsten. Now, I understand, and this has come up many a time off the air, not between you and I, but just in general, in conversation. Many people are talking still about the M&Ms and the fact that they made the green M&M not hot anymore because they took away her go-go boots. Mm-hmm. Gave and her those her- Dirty Lips. little sneakers. They gave, I think sneakers are sexy. I mean, I agree too, but those boots? Does she still have like the eyes and the lips and shit? Or do they get rid of those too? Did she have tits? No. <laughs> M&Ms don't have tits. <laughs> there's no way. Let's see a little before and after the green M&M. I mean, she was look at a that. They sexy gave her, doll. They told her to cover up her legs and her arms. <laughs> That's true. The legs look less sexy too because they're just like, now she just looks like the red one. But green and like the lips, I guess, are a little different. Oh no! Well, who's that? Oh, <laughs> that's her getting. <laughs> that's her getting naked right there, stripping down. But they also had now the other one that everyone was up in arm about was that purple M M&M. and M. Can you pull up that one? It was the peanut. It was a peanut M M&M, and M, and they were like, "This is our, you know, like you know, you have Matt Gates and fucking Tucker Carlson being like, they made an obese M M&M. and <laughs> M. How dare they sexualize an obese?" M and M. That's a terrible. I'm not doing an impression of either one of them, but it is just. Can you believe what they did to my M and M's? They turned one fat. They made one Lizzo. Look at that. Wasn't it also they were saying <laughs> that she was a trans M M&M? and M? Is that, it? That I was mean, a that was a right wing conspiracy she theory is designed, for a while. The purple one. Yeah, yeah. she's designed to represent uh, acceptance and inclusivity. Does it talk the purple one? Yeah, she had she she had a song in a commercial, and the song was like, "I'm free to be me." Who sang mm. the song? She sang the song. No, but who sang the song? Oh, I don't know. Did it? Let's look that up. I mean, it's I'm asking because if I want to go, like, I can, I can, I can take this the other way. We can get on the M and M's from both sides of the aisle. Amber Ruffin. I Amber Ruffin's a comedian. Yep. And is, if I am not mistaken, African-American. That's correct. Black, which that's what I was thinking of when I saw the purple m M&M, and I go, this is racist. <laughs> <laughs> Why does a black person have to voice the purple m M&M? It's fucked up. Mm-hmm. Fucked up. So there you go, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. <laughs> now you have a reason to be mad <laughs> at the M&Ms too. So let's get M&M's from both sides of the aisle. Let's go. But yeah, it's a peanut M&M. It's not that fat. Anyhow, wasn't the yellow one fat too? I mean, the yellow one's I always say, been I feel fat. like the purple the yellow one, one now just looks like um, a low IQ partner to the yellow one. Yeah, they're just two tubbies getting together. It's like what? Roseanne and Dan of <laughs> M&M's. I was watching Roseanne today. I'm like, how do people that size fuck each other? Anyhow, I want to know... 
because people are saying, how dare they take away the sexy M&M? Uh, evidently, there's people jaying their D's to M&M's out there. <laughs> Some Republicans out there are pissed off. They can't come to the green M&M any longer in her sexy feet. <laughs> Kirsten has decided she's going to pull up other, I guess, sentient objects that we uh, <laughs> might be sexually attracted to. Is that the best way to describe yeah, well, it? Yeah, well, here's the thing. They didn't just take the green M&M away from us. They said, we're taking all the M&Ms away from you, and now Maya Rudolph is our spokesperson. And so it's not just the green M&M. It's like we're completely out of any branding mascot to well, want to fuck now. What happens when you go to the M&M store? I don't know. I guess Maya there's, You know they there. have those, by the way? Yeah, and they smell awful. They smell terrible. It's so bad. I hate chocolate, for the record. I know that's <laughs> going to get me canceled, but I hate it. And also, so like I was in Vegas with some buddies, and like, you know, people who have kids, they go, I got to give my kids something, you know? So they, we just walked over to the M&M store to see if there's any dumb shit to give to their kid. And there wasn't. But there, the M&M store is just M&M's. It's so dumb. Who loves M&M's that much? Who's, I, can't, I couldn't believe there were people in there. I'm like, I got to see what these fucking morons buy. There's just window lickers in here. It's like you could go to the 7-Eleven and buy a pack of M&M's for like five cents. You're here to get your name on it so you can, like, what are we doing? Who gives? I can't believe they're still in business, but they're all, it's all branding. It's like they even show the logos over the years. They're like the fifties M&Ms, the sixties M&Ms. And then it's like the ones we know where they're, they're just like talking and shit. So strangely enough, I'm wondering now, do they take down all the M&M stuff? And now it's a Maya Rudolph store. Are, is the M&M store going to be a Maya Rudolph store? That's what I want to know. Anyhow. So they took away the whole thing from us. But we have other things that we can fuck, right? Well, yeah, I think we have a lot of other options that we just need to weigh and maybe look at. And maybe collectively we can come together and decide uh, who's going to be sexy next, you know? Yeah. I want to see a whole bunch of uh, logos I can fuck. That's what I want. Ooh, okay. this is a mermaid. Right, Mermaids is, are tough. Well, and yeah, and then you always wonder, like, is the second half, is the second bottom actually fish or is it woman? Yeah, I mean, I'd get blown by a mermaid, but I'm not, yeah. I never, Little Mermaid, all of, all of it, I mean, <laughs> well. never was a mermaid fan. Little Mermaid had older sisters, all right, <laughs> let's pump the brakes. <laughs> she was the youngest of, like, 12, I mean, I don't know, school of fish or something. Now, um, I will say that this is kind of three categories. We do kind of have, like, women, men, and then, since Objects. we don't see gender, it's both. Um and I just kind of want to know your opinion. So I'll give you individually and then Who's at the this? end. Who's this? The Gordon's Fisherman lady? This or is Catalina, the chicken of the sea mermaid. Oh, I didn't recognize her without the tuna fish around her. Yeah. I don't like that she's on the tuna fish. I mean, chicken of the sea, I know they're, they're the ones that claim no dolphins are in, are in our nets or whatever. But why do they have a mermaid there? Are we eating her? Well, she's freeing the dolphins from the nets, I think. That's really kind of fucking weird marketing, <laughs> though. She's like, this... This fucking chicken of the sea tastes like my pussy. <laughs> Why do we have a chick on there? I don't like it. Do her scales go up over her boobs? Or no, she's dress? got like a... I don't know. That's actually. for you to find out. Maybe it's like a hybrid situation. All right. Well, it is weird that she is on the tuna fish cover. It's like... Oh All right. No. So there's there's one. Now Ooh. this one. Now this came in from Rob. This was a suggestion. Great suggestion. Uh, the St. Pauli girl. Love the St. Pauli girl. One of the hottest logos out there. I mean, the St. Pauli girl is all cans. I mean, it's just, they were like, hey, here's some tits. She even like opens her arm. She's holding two, three mugs in that one hand. Three mugs in each hand. That's crazy upper mm -hmm. body strength. And her tits look great. She's the best. All right. All right, the Chiquita Banana Lady. There's no way she's still the. This is a real logo, still, right? Or is she? Because that is hot. <laughs> and she's got a w thing on her head. I don't know. It seems yeah, she's got a fruit basket up there. Yeah, that's so seems she comes with snacks. True, but it's also appropriating something, I'm sure. And uh, I don't. I can't believe they haven't changed her <laughs> to being just some banana that's non, you know, gender or culture. Uh, some cultureless banana I can't believe isn't the logo but what does Chiquita mean do we know is that a thing is that a word like a actual word that people well Chica means girl right does, well, what is Chiquita with a Q mean? is that what it's derivative is she just from? a tiny lady 
a child. That's what they're saying. Oh, no. It's so that's like, yikes, my little girl. Yikes. Yeah, it just means small, Chiquita. <laughs> Creepy. I don't like the name of it anymore either. <laughs> Sun Maid, no, the Raisins Lady. The Raisin Lady. She's wholesome. She's like, uh, you know, you have your gingers and you have your Marianne's in Gilligan Island talk. She is a Marianne, the, the Raisin Lady. But again, a migrant worker, perhaps? I don't, I mean, what are we talking about here? Why is she dressed that way? They're like, here's this hot migrant worker picking raisins and shit. Do you pick raisins? Again, not going to get too in depth into it. Well, they're grapes. They're grapes. Yeah, yeah no, she's doing the grapes part. Okay, that she looks like the woman who yeah. fell in the like early viral video days <laughs> in the bucket of grapes. She's like <laughs> that chick, <laughs> like an old I Love Lucy or something. Okay, all right. Now this next one is a little controversial. She's no longer with us, but I just felt like it was right to represent, and also Rob brought it up too. So I thought, why not? And Jemai. Oh my <laughs> lord! No, it's uh, the Lando Lakes butter. The butter lady. She's hot, don't get me wrong, but it is very Pocahontas vibes, very John Smith. She's on her knees, subservient, <laughs> holding the butter here, offering the butter to the white man, probably. <laughs> and she's getting ready to like, she's like, the butter. And then she also like blows you. You know, I mean, it's a very, I get why they got rid of this logo. It is on many levels problematic. Good answer. Good but answer. she's hot. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> would smash 100% Lando Lakes. Chiquita would smash. Lando Lakes would smash. Yo, Sun Maid can get it. St. Right. Pauli's girl's hot. The mermaid, maybe a blowy. That's about it. But Wait. if we have to fuck, Mary kill. Now, if you have to arrange it that way. I'm going to kill the mermaid. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to put you in a can and eat you. <laughs> Gonna get you caught up in my net. <laughs> I'm going to fuck. I'm gonna fuck the Land of Lakes lady, and I'm <laughs> going to. Yep. Cancel me, I guess. You know. I'm going to marry the Sun Maid chick because she just seems wholesome to me. Okay. Does it change? You your, threw me for a loop there. Does it change your choices if the mermaid is a fish on top and a lady on bottom? No, I would be <laughs> e way more freaked out by that. <laughs> Good God! All right, I mean, I like, I like your, uh, I like your setup there. I think I agree with you most part. I mean, except for maybe I'd maybe fuck Saint Polly girl and marry Sunmaid just because she seems so wholesome. Saint Polly girl still, I, I did pick Sunmaid to marry. Um, Saint Polly girl, yeah, I guess I would just is a little too on the nose, and she seems like she could hurt me. <laughs> 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 she seems like she's a bruiser, even though she's hot. She's like one of those chicks that's just like. You see her at a bar, you're like, that girl's so hot. And she's like, what's up, slugger? And she, like, punches you in the <laughs> fucking arm. And you're like, ow, <laughs> okay. Um, so now we have, I, I mean, I'll do this with dudes, too. Okay, so here's the thing. I think Brawny, the Brawny man here, I, is that a new Brawny man? Because the Brawny man had a mustache in my day. See, I saw another one, and I thought that was the fake. The fa the one with the mustache? Yeah, but he had, like, blonde hair, too. Yeah, he was... I feel like he... Why did they change it? They're like, we need, oh. a, need, a, we need a more modern man. Here we go. Yeah, because that guy looks kind of 80s. He looks maybe 70s, 80s. And they're like, we need to update. Although, the old brownie man looks like he could get it now. He looks mm -hmm. like, uh, like, comparatively, like, this guy looks like a stooge. So that's controversial, I would say. I, I think they got to go back to the old brownie man. He looked cool. He looked like... A guy that, like, uh, you'd see at a fun concert. This guy looks like a square. This guy looks like he would actually clean up after you, though, if you know what I mean. The other guy looks like he'd probably be like, I'm not bringing you that paper towel. No, he looks like he'd chop down the tree to make the paper <laughs> towel. And this guy looks like, oh, did you spill? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, the Jolly Green Giant, that guy is ripped. He's also massive. I wonder if there's Jolly Green Giant porn, because I know I'm hearing all about this gigantous yeah. porn, and I wonder if any of them are like, can you like make yourself green and say, ho, 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 and uh, <laughs> then step on me? Yeah, the Jolly Green Giant, uh, you know, that's a very short, I don't know, I guess we're going to call it a loincloth uh, made <laughs> of vegetables. It's very short. I'm surprised his dong <laughs> isn't hanging down. Does he have a penis? Or is he a tree? Or is he like a f fake thing? I don't know. Have you ever seen him from behind? 
No, we have a picture of him from behind. <laughs> Did they ever show that? That seems like it's going to be a porn we saw graphic. It, um, we saw it last week. <laughs> Oh my Rob Lord. and I did. Oh, I can't find it now. Oh my! Oh, there's a couple of them. There's one where it's like an upskirt shot. There was one of him walking down the river, and. Uh, Are you telling me that the Jolly Green Giant is cakes? Uh, yeah. I mean, his veggies did him right. Okay, okay. That's a, <laughs> that should be the endorsement. It's like <laughs> check out the cakes on this vegetable. <laughs> you know, not since Terry Shivo would we have a vegetable that, that kind of cakes on it. <laughs> I uh, next up we have the what is this man again? This the, is uh, Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean. How could I forget? Mr. Clean is totally gay for the record, and I yeah. I, 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 I they should have made him gay. Like if one of these guys, if they're gonna say you know, it turns out, you know, trying to be woke and shit, Mr. Clean should have went gay because he's got the earring, he's bald, he's clean and shit. I think Mr. Clean should fuck the brawny guy. That was what I was going to say. Definitely top energy. Yes. Over Brawny Man. Brawny Man is a bottom. Mr. Clean is a top. And Mr. Clean, you know, I that would go, they should market that better because you could use Mr. Clean and Brawny together. They, mm. they You can't have one without the other, right? You got to <laughs> use Brawny to wipe the Mr. Clean. Isn't Mr. Clean like a substance? He's got all types of stuff. Mr. Clean, yeah. Mr. Clean, they squirt shit, right? He's got erasers. He's got liquids. Ah, there's so it's a whole line of stuff. Yeah. Ah, boy, you can tell how great I am at cleaning. <laughs> the Gordon's fisherman. Now this guy looks like he's going to human traffic uh, <laughs> some women. <laughs> he's got a real "I know what you did last summer" hat on, and uh, he's like, "Arr, I'm Gordon's fisherman. I've also got Asians and barrels in my hull, <laughs> taking them to Thailand." Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, he looks scary. I don't know if I trust him necessarily. He's like the mermaid version of a gentleman so far. Mm -hmm. Is it a, is it Gorton's? Gorton's. Yes, it is. It's this not is with a, a D. This is a Mandela effect situation for me. I, I always it knew it was Gorton's. I thought it was Gorton's. No, sir. Gorton's indeed. That's like you're having a Bernstein Bears moment. Yeah. All right, who's next here? What's this one? The Quaker Oats the man. The Quaker Oats guy. Now, I... he's definitely gay for the record, but it's old-timey gay, 1877 gay, where he's not allowed to be because he's a Quaker. <laughs> and he's all very like, ooh, my stars, like that kind of gay. Like he's behind closed doors. It's like a Sam Smith song. Yeah. I feel like... It yeah, he's gay, but he like does things like finger without permission to try and cover it up. <laughs> That's the vibe I get from him. He's he like freaks foppish me out. to me. He's foppish, you know what I mean? Like he's all like, "Oh my, <laughs> my oats are Quaker <laughs> oats, dear heavens to Betsy!" Like he's real queefy to me, like that. But uh, ooh, who is, is that? A uh, Chef Boyardee? This is Chef Boyardee. Now he's just a nice guy, I think. Chef Boyardee. You kind of just want him to hold you, you know? Well, he's like your uncle or something. He's got well, a stupid not that hat. Way, but yeah. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's just like a nice uh, uncle. He's like, oh, my uncle chef is here. <laughs> my uncle boy. I don't know. What do you call it? His, <laughs> his last name's Boyardee. Seems a little weird. It's a real guy. He's um, real? Yeah, he's real. No. Yes. He's got such sweet eyes. I mean, his real name's not Boyardee, is it? It's Boyardee. B oh. With a B O B O I A R D I. Well, that sounds better. I don't like Boyardee now the more that I say it. Ettore Boyardee. Boy are we, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, so I got to do a fuck, Mary kill with these ones? Yes, yeah. It's just, uh, you know, we have to include some, like, real kind of real characters, and then the next round is where it gets fun. I'm excited. I want, I guess I'll fuck Mr. Clean, because I feel like he's... I, the gayest and uh, he'd like it the most. I don't know. I think Mr. Clean fucks you, if I'm being honest. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> I, I'd imagine that would be the case. I'm going to marry Chef Boyardee because he's going to die soon, frankly, <laughs> that's really, out of all of them. And I'm going to kill that Gorton's fisherman because I feel like he's doing sex crimes and I don't know about it. Freaking me out. All right. I think that's a good selection. Oh, all right. Now we're going on to not man, not woman, but you tell me what you think. Sentient objects. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or animals. Oh, they're great. This guy is buff, though. I mean, mm -hmm. he's doing coke, though, Tony the Tiger. Let's face <laughs> it. He is 
amped up all the time. He's on Adderall. He is on Coke, something or other. He's got that little, he has that Coachella bandana around his neck. So, you know, he's into like party <laughs> drugs for sure. He's like one of those guys that like is doing drugs and drinking all the time. But then you're like, how is this guy always just go, go, go? He never sleeps. It's probably from all those flakes that he eats. But yeah, he's cool. I'm chill with Tony the Tiger. Who the hell is that? This is the laughing cow. From what? <laughs> laughing cow cheese. Laughing cow cheese. What the fuck is laughing cow cheese, Kirsten? I don't ever Those heard of Those little that. wedges? The little wedges. Oh, I'm a baby bell guy. All right. Well, aren't they both cows? Baby bell's a cow? Does it even have a mascot, baby bell? Is baby bell a thing? Maybe Am not. I saying it right? Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I've never had the uh, laughing cow one. That is the t- most terrifying mascot I've ever seen. What? I think it's terrifying. Oh, my God. I thought she was beautiful. She's wearing her earrings that are actually her product made of cheese. I don't know. I lost it again. You went <laughs> off the. Uh... Oh, sorry. No, it's. I didn't even notice that. Let me see again now that it's come back on. She's wearing earrings from cheese. Oh. She last... just looks a little too great. Like it's it's weird that she's like a graphic. You know what I'm saying? Like, why don't they use a real cow? Uh, laughing cow <laughs> is the baby bell cow. They're manufactured by the same company. Oh, my God. So I guess I am familiar with the product. I've never seen this in my (laughs) life. Why is she all sassy with her arms crossed? And why is she standing? I don't like that. It's creeping me out. Oh, the Kool-Aid man. I mean, Mm -hmm. this guy is the best. This is a total vibes guy. He's a glue guy. He's the guy you want at all your parties. You're like, oh, Kool-Aid guy's coming? Fuck yeah, dude. I can't wait to see. I haven't seen him in fucking weeks. Hell yeah. And then he smashes through a wall, and you're like, not my house. I don't give a shit. He's always breaking chairs and stuff. He's that guy where you're like, oh, I can't wait to see what Kool-Aid guy breaks at the party. Yeah, he's the man. I don't necessarily know if I want to fuck any of these necessarily, but we're so far I want to chill and hang with both Tony the Tiger and the Kool-Aid man. Ah, the Keebler elf. He's a fucking dork. <laughs> <laughs> I want to kick this thing. <laughs> Live in their stupid tree and they have their... Ew, how does he talk? Do we, can we, do we remember? Does he have a voice? Is he like an old man voice or a kid voice? Is he like, oh, we got to make our cookies? I think or that's, is he like, that's it, exactly He has it. like a soft little giggle. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I hate him. He looks like fucking Mickey Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking weird. Oh, this guy's this cool, too. Guy. The Cheetos tiger. Now, he's like him and Tony, like, or, or is he like a <laughs> cheetah? Yeah, yeah, my bad. Not a tiger. But like him and Tony the tiger, like, roll together. But like, he's the chill one. He's like, yeah, you know, we're going to fuck. You know, he's always got girls. This guy's the man. <laughs> He's always like, yeah, you want to come hang out? I'm going to hang out with like 64 girls <laughs> and me, a cheetah, and then you can be the only dude there. He seems like he'd hook it up. <laughs> Chester is his name? Chester the Cheetah? Chester. Yeah, he's the man. Oh, this is the Charmin Bears freak me out, dude. They're always wiping their ass. They're always like walking or and they don't have pants on, for the record, which if we're going to have animals that shit, to advertise toilet paper, I want them to have pants on. <laughs> I just need them to have pants on. I mean, it's so fun. And they're always walking around all coy, like a little kid that has to shit. You know what I mean? They're always like, oh, you know what I, they're like lurking around a corner <laughs> or like hiding behind a chair because they have to shit, but they don't have toilet paper. It, I don't know. The whole vibe of the commercial is just like off-putting to me. <laughs> is that the mom bear? What is that? I know, it's one of them. But yeah. hey, at least you know you're getting a clean... Clean product. Yeah, they're hiding behind they the Charmin logo. They might wipe you. I don't know. They're hiding behind the Charmin logo like, is anyone watching me shit right now? <laughs> it's fucking weird. <laughs> the hell's that? The bee from yeah. Bumblebee Tuna? <laughs> is that what it is? Uh, I think that's this, Jollibee. This little silly guy is from Jollibee. What the fuck's Jollibee? It's <laughs> a <laughs> restaurant. I have never once in my life it's a fast food What's restaurant. What's Jollibee? <laughs> they sell like hamburgers and spaghetti or something. Hamburgers and spaghetti? <laughs> Fried chicken and spaghetti. Fried chicken Fried and chicken spaghetti. That's even worse. <laughs> Jollibee. I have never, I have been all over this great country. <laughs> Every state in this country I've been in. Where the fuck is a Jollibee? Are they just like that Yoshinoya restaurant where I just go, well, that's just a non-player character. I never go to the Yoshinoyas, but I see them everywhere. Where the fuck is Jollibee? There might be one out here. There's one in downtown LA. 
Oh, I'm not going there. <laughs> not for Jollibee. Are they, I mean, are they all over the country? Where do they ha- where do they hail from? I mean, you know how like you got certain restaurants like a Shoney's or whatever is like the South. Or you've got like In N Out Burger is It's a Filipino chain of fast food restaurants. This what? is like what a Filipino person would you just ask like a Filipino person on the street like what do Americans eat? They're like spaghetti and fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> so random. Unbelievable. Is he the last one, Jolly Bee? Um, we're getting there. Oh, this guy's the man too. I mean, yeah. you want to talk about if I'm gonna fuck one, I'm fucking <laughs> I'm fucking the hamburger helper glove because you can fuck four holes on this guy. It should be five. I don't know why he only has four fingers, but uh. I would fuck the hamburger helper. And it's got a mouth. <laughs> Not only can you fuck its four finger holes, it's got a mouth. And if you, it's kind of like one of those like weird, like I can come into it and it won't get pregnant because he is like a condom, but he his body's the condom, so it's kind of like kind of cool. Is it a boy? I don't know. We're going to go genderless with the hamburger helper. Real quick, Glove. have you have you ever seen the hamburger helpers like uh, low IQ cousin? No. The Arby glove. I think I've seen the Arby glove, but let's. Oh, it's like a mitten. It's like yeah, a, exactly. yeah. He's like a real like. <laughs> hey, hamburger helper. <laughs> Why is he a mitten though? Like in Arby's, I guess to pull out the roast beef. The hamburger helper glove is like a real glove. It's got although it's only got four fingers. It's like what kind of glo- I wonder if they were like it's better with four fingers because five fingers makes it too much like a glove. Mm. Mm-hmm. He's cute though, but which one do you think is dumber? Definitely the Arby's guy. I don't know. Look at the dumb face on this slack jawed idiot. Here. No. <laughs> Depends on what you think about Tom Arnold because he's the voice of the Arby's oven mitt. Tom Arnold is what? the well. That was a real on the nose thing. He's like, uh, hey, uh, it's me, Tom Arnold. How are you? I don't know the fucking Arby's Club. I can't. That's as good as I get there with Tom Arnold. I bet I, I could easily get that Tom Arnold on the show, I think. <laughs> uh, now, what the fuck is that? What in the cinnamon toast fuck you mean? Is that a cinnamon toast Yeah, crunch? it's a crazy square. Oh, my Lord. This little devilish creature. Okay, so this is... Now, did they have multiple cinnamon toast crunches? Yeah, and they were always uh, eating each other. They are kind of like cannibals. What? You don't remember that? No, but I definitely don't remember this one with the biggest tongue I've ever seen. <laughs> Where does it keep that in its little thin mouth? He was using that to lick the sugar off of his friend before he ate him. Oh, so like the cinnamon toast crunches kind of get down. They're kind of freaky. Yeah, I kind of like that. They're all having a little cinnamon toast orgy. <laughs> They're all licking each other and eating each other and shit. Do they have voices? I don't remember this ad <laughs> campaign. They're like, now, uh, here's what we're going to do to stand out. We have, okay, we have a little cinnamon toast crunch, and imagine, if you will, they all fuck. <laughs> They're all fucking in your mouth, all those flavors, right? Like the creepiest ad guy in the history of time. <laughs> this one's like, yes, I like it. Ooh, now another tuna mascot. This one's better because, although is it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this one looks kind of like a dolphin. You know, they're always like, we don't have any dolphins, promise. This one... It's the blue whale, right? What yeah, is it? this is, is Charlie the tuna. Oh, so he is a tuna. Yeah, I think it's like the sun-kissed tuna brand. Yes. I thought it was like a, a whale or something. Again, a wrong fish to <laughs> advertise <laughs> a tuna. But no, he is a tuna. It is weird how happy he is that his friends and his family <laughs> are in the can you're about to consume. Not sure I like that the thing that I'm eating that's that's something that they have to be aware of too right the thing that you're consuming do you want a happy little logo on the can that makes you go oh a tuna and then you're like well I guess I'm gonna eat one now I don't know this guy looks like a fucking nerd why has he got a little hat on like that and glasses (laughs) he looks like a little artist oh this thing I can't fuck that I mean (laughs) what am I Pedophile? <laughs> Can't fuck the Pillsbury Dough boy. Give me I'm, a Pillsbury Dough man. You no, know, fuck that. There you go. You gonna fuck him? Oh my lord! <laughs> there what is the f- a Pillsbury Dough man. Why do they have that? That's the first scary. one was a test. Also, why is his? Why has he got like Ken? He's not wearing pants and he's got no penis. So 
Very strange. It's hidden in his dough rules. And I don't like how his jaw is so defined. <laughs> it's very fucking weird. What did the, do you know the lineage of the Pillsbury Dough Man? Did he just like one day like Hulk up or something? Or I'm not sure really. I just I know I just know I found him, and I knew that we couldn't fuck the Pillsbury Dough Boy because he's a boy. But I thought. Although it's very Bart Simpson-y with the Pillsbury Doughboy because Bart Simpson is like older than me, but he stays the same age. Same mm. with the Pillsbury Doughboy. The Pillsbury Doughboy is made in like the 40s. So he's really like an old man at this point, which also would be wrong to have sex with because of elderly abuse. But that guy, that's fucking creepy and weird <laughs> and CGI'd and I don't like it. And his arms look like thumbs. I don't like it. <laughs> Yeah, he's all like, oh, he's flexing and shit. Fucking strange. So, so I guess go. I got to do a fuck, Mary kill with these fucking things. <laughs> yep. I'm fucking the, the glove. <laughs> Already said that. Nothing makes me happier than the fact that you chose him. I If I were to like gay marry the Kool-Aid guy, that'd be kind of fun. But no, actually, Chester Cheeto would be my guy because he's super chill and cool. And I'm going to fucking kill that stupid elf. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> Looks like Mickey Mickey Rooney, and he's fucking living in a tree, and he's all like, "Ooh, I've got my my El Fudge." I think I'm doing a pretty accurate. That one was guy. close, I think, too. Actually, ooh, I got a stick up my ass. <laughs> wouldn't they? What was the whole commercial with them? They like wouldn't let the other fud, the other elves eat it. They're like, "These are for people," or something like that. Was that it? I don't know. Maybe I misremembered. I don't, right. I don't think it was right either, Rob. <laughs> I don't remember. I have dark memories though of those stupid elves. I'll tell you that right now. Well, that was a fun little game. If there's any logos out there that you think I should take a look at and consider having sex with, I would very much appreciate it. Do send them in the Josh Potter Show at gmail.com. Remember, starting in March, the show is moving to Wednesday. I hope you move with us. Other than that, March 10th, Bellflower, California. At the Stand Up Comedy Club. April 22nd, The Well in Bakersfield. May 5th and 6th, I'll be at Mike Drop Mania down in Chandler, Arizona. All the tickets and all the dates can be found up on my Instagram, which is at Josh underscore Potter. And on Twitter, at J underscore Potter. I hope you had a very wonderful Valentine's Day. I hope you get your dick sucked. I hope you get your pussy eaten. Whatever you want tonight, I hope you get it. And if you're just alone... Stay strong. Jerk your own dick. Or finger your own vagina. Whatever you gotta do. I love you very much. And we will see you next Tuesday. But remember, we're moving to Wednesdays in March. Right here on The Josh Potter Show. <laughs>